acting attorney general informed the White House counsel that they wanted to give, quote, a heads up to us on some comments that may have seemed in conflict with what the, he had sent the vice president out in particular. The White House counsel informed the president immediately. The president asked him to conduct a review of whether there was a legal situation there. That was immediately determined that there wasn't. That was what the president believed at the time from what he had been told, and he was proved to be correct. The issue, pure and simple, came down to a matter of trust. And the president concluded that he no longer had the trust of his national security advisor over. It was proper for the incoming national security advisor, not part of an administration, to be discussing an issue as sensitive as sanctions with the Russian well, ambassador. I, I mean, the, the, his job is to discuss issues with his counterparts. I mean, Charles Krauthammer put it perfectly last night. That's what he's supposed to be doing. I mean, that's his job. That's, I mean, we, we would constantly read out throughout the transition who he was speaking to, how he was getting ready. The president was receiving congratulatory calls from around the world. We would read out the world leader calls. The job of the incoming NSA is to sit down with the counterparts and start that dialogue. Um, and that's exactly what he did. So the question wasn't, did he do anything improper or legal? It's the question of, could he be trusted further? And that trust, or the erosion of that trust, was frankly the issue. So, the president instruct him? To talk about sanctions? No, absolutely not. No, no, no. But th that, no, and there's no, that, that's okay, never. So, so would you prefer he had not done that? Well, I, I think the president was had no problem with the fact that he acted in accord with what his job was supposed to be doing. He had the ability to talk about issues that were important, whether it was that or the 30 other countries that he spoke to. That was part of his job. As has been noted by many people, that's what the National Security Advisor and, frankly, other positions do. They begin the process of preparing their j incoming job by talking to counterparts, people who have previously held the job, et cetera. If he had not done that, there would be questions as to whether he's properly prepared on day one. Conversation about no, he, the, the, the issue isn't whether or not what he discussed. There's been a complete legal review of that, and there's no issue with that. The issue is whether or not he failed to properly inform the vice president or not be honest with him or not remember it. But that's this plain and simple issue. And when he lost trust with the president, that's when the president asked for and received his resignation. Sean, uh, Sean. Thanks a lot, Sean. Uh, yesterday, Kellyanne Conway, the counsel to the president, uh, said that the president continued to have trust in General Flynn. Right. What happened between yesterday morning and yesterday evening that led the president to lose confidence in General Flynn? Well, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what where the president's thinking was, but I will just say, as I noted in the opening statement, that it was an evolving and eroding process. And so, at the end of the day, the president made a decision, as he does on all subjects, and, and asked for and received the National Security Advisors. Um, but he is one of those people that we've noted before, when he is ready to make a decision, he makes it, whether it's hiring somebody or asking for someone's resignation. Once he is determined uh, that he has made a decision on any subject, that's when he informs the staff. So going into the day, it was an evolving situation. He made a determination late in the day, and he executed on it. Sure. Yeah, oh, Alexis. He's an extremely loyal person, General Flynn. Was it a difficult decision for the president to let General Flynn go? Well, sure. I mean, General Flynn is a dedicated public service. He's a head of the DIA. He has been an outstanding um, member of the Army, both as, a, as an officer and then as a flag officer. He's served this country admirably. Um, and I think the President appreciated his service to his nation, his commitment to his campaign, and his service to this country so far. But at some point, the decision came down on whether or not that that trust had, ev had eroded. The important matters, as I mentioned, that are before the President when he's dealing with issues of world matters, of all of the issues, friends and allies, uh, foes, hot spots. He needs to rely on, on a national security advisor to give him sage advice. And I think at a certain point, that guidance, that trust eroded, and the President, as he does on all matters, ultimately decides uh, that when he's ready to make a decision, he executes. Alexis. Um, does the President believe that anything that he discussed with General Flynn during the transition might have been construed by the General as a request or an encouragement to discuss sanctions with the Russian ambassador. That's question number one. So, uh, then we're going to pause. Um, so, on the first, again, as I made clear, there's nothing that the general did that was a violation of any sort. Um, he was well within his duties to discuss issues of common concern between the two countries. I, I will say it again. The, what this came down to is a matter of trust. 
Uh, the president was glad that he was out there conducting his job, preparing for his job, uh, going back and forth with his counterparts throughout the world, much as the president had done, with all of these world leaders calling the president, congratulating him, looking to set up calls uh, for him once he was inaugurated. Uh, similarly, General Flynn was beginning that process with his counterparts throughout the world. That was never of a concern to the president from day one that he was briefed from the White House counsel. The issue, plain and simple, came down to a matter of trust. <laughs> And, and once that occurred, it was over. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Number one, just to clarify, yeah. the president is not it does not believe that any discussion that might have taken place, and we know from right. intel it did on sanctions, uh, creates a problem for the president in any in any way. That that is not a problem. That that General Flynn discussed sanctions with the Russians. Um, no, there is. As I, I can't state it clearly enough, there was nothing in what General Flynn did in terms of conducting himself that was an issue. What came down to, plain and simple, was him misleading the Vice President and others and not having a firm grasp on his recollection of that. That's it. Uh, this Here's question number two. Um, lawmakers on Capitol Hill from both sides of the aisle mm -hmm. would like to uh, investigate or probe or ask more questions about this. Does the President hope to cooperate with those investigations? Would he instruct members who, uh, of his staff who work for him here? And in the in the uh, administration to cooperate with those investigations. Well, we'll we're going to comply with the law. Um, I think the president feels very confident. The review that was conducted by White House counsel was very thorough and concluded very conclusively, as he had first come to, instinctively come to the conclusion, that there was nothing wrong. So, um, you know, people are free to do what they wish, but I think that they will find exactly what the president first believed and what the White House counsel concluded. And frankly, I believe a couple publications even reported that there was no investigation for a reason, because there was not an issue of law, it was an issue of trust. Shut, shut George. Shut George. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when do you expect to have a replacement uh, in place? And secondly, on, a, on another topic, there was a report yesterday that one of your colleagues said the White House is keeping dossiers on reporters. Yeah. Uh, can you say if that's true or not? Uh, there, that is absolutely not true. There are no dossiers being kept. Just a binder that I put right here. That's about it. Um, that was a joke. <laughs> it's, um, hold on one second. And then, I'm sorry, George, the first part. The timetable on a replacement. Uh, as soon, I mean, just like the way he handled this situation, the president will meet with, um, with individuals. And when he's ready to make a decision and he feels as though the person is qualified uh, and can uh, properly advise him on the issue, he'll make that decision. But that's all, as all decisions uh, rest with him. I'm just going to go to my first Skype seat, John Huck of WKVVU out of Las Vegas. John. Thank you so much on behalf of our viewers here in Southern Nevada for the opportunity to join you today. As you know, Sean, Las Vegas has suffered terribly in the last recession, more so than perhaps any other city in the country. As the administration moves forward with repealing financial regulations and possibly rolling back Dodd-Frank, what guarantees can you make to Nevadans that those actions won't lead banks and investment banks to re-engage with the risky financial behaviors that tanked our economy the last time and left taxpayers here on the hook to bail those banks out. Um, thanks, John. I think one of the things, if you look at the intent of Dodd-Frank, uh, it was to make sure that we didn't have institutions that were too big to fail. And frankly, it has actually created institutions that are now too big to fail. Dodd-Frank actually did exactly the opposite of what it intended to do. And I think when you look at the regulation uh, HJ, HJR 41 that the president is signing today, this is another example of the president taking decisive action um, to roll back regulations that are frankly creating more of a burden on our nation's banks and businesses than helping them. I think the president is going to be very clear with making sure that we do things that build up um, the goal of what Dodd-Frank actually intended to do. But right now, we actually, through Dodd-Frank, put taxpayers more on the hook uh, than we let them off. We've created more institutions and created more guarantees for the federal government to bail out some of these institutions if they if they exceed their authority. Uh, John Roberts. Uh, let me come back to what you said at the beginning. You said the White House Counsel's uh, Office reviewed this and determined that there was nothing illegal. What evidence did they look at in making this determination? And secondly, Democrats up on the Hill are, say that they want an investigation of this. They're looking into what did the president know and when did he know it? So can you tell us what evidence you looked at at the White House Counsel's Office and what did the president know about all of this and when was he aware of it? 
Well, as I mentioned, the first day that the Department of Justice uh, made White House counsel available uh, or sought to notify White House counsel was January 26. The president was immediately informed of the situation. Uh, as I said, uh, based on the information that was provided at the time, his view was uh, that this was not a violation. He was proved instinctively correct. Um, and White House counsel at that time undertook an extensive review. Um, both of materials and questioning. Um, I, I'm not going to get into the specifics. What I will tell you is, on multiple occasions, um, they had an exhaustive and extensive uh, questioning of General Flynn on several occasions based on um, information that was provided to them or materials that were provided to them to review. I'm not going to get into to the details of that, but I will just say that there was an exhaustive review. And again, the thing that's important to note is the Vice President, myself, in fact, I think the first time I brought this issue up was January 13th. The Department of Justice didn't notify the White House or the White House Counsel at that time in the transition phase until 13 days later. So I think it's important to understand something very, very important. This idea of why did it take so long, I think the furthest first question should be, where was the Department of Justice in this? They were, at, they were aware of this. We were making statements based on what General Flynn was telling us starting on January 13th. The vice president went out on the 15th, right? They didn't notify the White House counsel's office until January 26th. At that time, there was an immediate, uh, the, the president was immediately informed of that and, and then asked the White House counsel to conduct a very, very thorough review. The first part of that review was focused on whether or not there was any legal issue. That's it. Once that became the issue, then there was a, it shifted into phase two, which is whether or not there was trust still maintained. And that issue, then that became a separate set of, of issues that were. I'm, just, I'm speaking to the, the actual evidence. The, the FBI has transcripts of these uh, intercepts, which mm -hmm. I assume were done by the NSA right. via FISA court order. Did, was there any communication between the White House Counsel's Office and the FBI? Did those transcripts ever enter? Into I, I will the say that obviously the, the, there was obviously communication between the Department of Justice and the White House Counsel's Office. I'm not going to get into the specific nature of that. I think it would be inappropriate uh, because of the nature of, of the information that was being discussed. Why yeah. Not, why not uh, dismiss the general on January 27th? Why, if, if the question was of trust, and immediately, you know, you have January 15th, he's on Face the Nation saying that, uh, Vice President Pence is on Face the Nation saying that this is what General Flynn told me, and then January 26th, you, you hear the opposite. Why not immediately act? Why wait another two and a half weeks? I, I, I don't understand how that's a due process. There was a, because what the Attorney General didn't come in, and uh, the acting Attorney General, come in and say that there was an issue. She said, we wanted to give you a heads up that there may be information. Okay? There was, she could not confirm there was an investigation. And so it would be unbelievably short sighted and wrong to go in and, and dismiss someone immediately. In fact, what the president did was take decisive action to make sure that the White House counsel thoroughly <laughs> reviewed and vetted the situation. That was, he took immediate decisive action. And if you look at the timeline in terms of what he did and how that expanded, the White House counsel's first and foremost goal was to make sure that there was not a legal issue at hand. Once that was concluded, then it became a, a, a a, a phase of determining whether or not the general's action on this and a whole host of other issues undermined his trust in the president. That's, but, but the president, from day one, from minute one, was unbelievably decisive in asking for and demanding that his White House counsel and their team review the situation, first and foremost, to question whether it's a legal issue. And what they immediately determined, not immediately, but within a, a several days, was that after review, that there was not a legal issue, and then it moved into a second phase. So 